Hello, I'm Brian Rose, founder of Biohackers United. And today I just wanted to talk about biohacking is, and I wanted to give you some examples of different types of biohacks, but a little bit about me. I've been a stockbroker for the last 20 years, but prior to that, I was a military police officer. And growing up at, back in Atlanta, I used to do biohacks such as lucid dreaming to alter my dreams whenever I had a nightmare and if you're curious about lucid dreaming and you want me to go into it I could do a separate video but my passion and background as a biohacker if you look at the channel and what I focus on is what's called vibrational biohacking and it talks about the body's vibrational energy which I can considered to be divine energy you can say it's your soul but it resonates within the universe itself one thing to realize about your own body's vibrational frequency a healthy body typically has a vibrational frequency between 62 and 70 megahertz now if your vibrational energy starts to decline below 58 megahertz that's when you can get chronic conditions or if you have like a chronic condition it can lower your body's vibrational energy so that's what I typically focus on but I wanted to talk about a recent day previously that I did and I conducted several biohacks and I wanted to walk you through it and talk about it. so just as a general overview of what biohacking is the ability to change your body's biology so it's not specifically to extend longevity which you know like brian johnson is trying to don't die and he's on a path to live as long as possible but biohacking itself could be just specific biohacks to change your body's biology. Now, let me give you three examples. One way to increase your vibrational energy, which I spoke about, is by increasing your VO2 max. Now, there's several different methods you could use to increase your VO2 max like high intensity training. But with biohacks, you're basically using high intensity training to increase your VO2 max to increase your vibrational energy, which you can track with like a Garmin watch or you can track with a Zyto hand cradle. Another method of examples for a biohack is you can increase your white blood cell count. So you can increase your white blood cell production by the use of a sauna on a daily basis. What's the benefit of boosting your white blood cells or boosting your heat shock proteins uh, with the use of a sauna is it decreases just for, it helps to detox, but it decreases the amount of colds, the amount of viruses. It helps boost your immune system. I haven't gotten sick in several years just from using the sauna on a daily basis like after working out it artificially raises your body's core temperature between 102 and 104 so it puts you into a artificial temperature so your body thinks it has a fever so it kicks in the increased white blood cell production the third example i wanted to talk about is you can naturally increase your body's stem cell production a lot of people will do injections of stem cells but you can boost your body's stem cell production by doing a water fast so after about 36 hours of fasting your GI tract starts to produce stem cells so I typically fast for about three to four days I actually I'm drinking green tea right now I'll drink green tea while I'm doing a water fast because green tea itself has an appetite suppressant so 
One of the biohacks is I'll be fasting for three to four days, but the biohack itself is to increase stem cell production to help boost my immune system and to help detox. But you see how like specific either protocols or techniques are a path to altering your body's biology and kicking in different types of mechanisms throughout your body. So what I want to talk about is specific example of a biohacking session that I did a couple weeks ago. So I was trying to detox but boost my body's immune system by reducing endotoxin. So the night before I was doing this biohacking session, I took prune lax. Prunlax has the ability to flush toxins the day after. So the purpose was to clear everything out of my GI tract before I started the biohacking session so that I would have less endotoxins and I would have less inflammation from the very beginning. The next day after work, went to the gym and I ran for about two miles on the treadmill. The purpose of running on the treadmill it's another way to increase your vo2 max the sweat production also helps to get rid of toxins so i'll typically start out for about the first setting on the treadmill which you can uh, walk at about level three i kicked it up to a level five for a steady jog and then i would boost it up to around level seven while i was running second half of two miles the idea of doing the um running itself is running helps boost the lymphatic system because you're bouncing and you're running up and down it helps remove toxins i've found that if i run one to two miles i'll sleep better at night but i've also noticed that if i run it helps stimulate the gi system itself so after about three o'clock after after running two miles, I immediately went out and I was lifting weights at the gym for about 30 minutes, just doing my regular workout, trying to increase my VO2 max, also trying to boost circulation and blood flow. Now, after my post-workout, which I do this as a habit, around four o'clock, I spent about 20 minutes in the sauna after the workout. The reason why I specifically will go to the sauna after the workout is it produces heat shock protein. The heat shock proteins is if you're familiar with like origami. So when proteins within your body has to fold in a proper order and if you get like glucose, if you get sugar molecules that bind to proteins, they'll fold improperly. Now heat shock proteins have an opposite effect. Heat shock proteins will bind to regular proteins and then the will help the protein fold properly now this is critically important after lifting weights because your muscles are sore it has shortened the amount of time for me to recover from like leg workouts from any types of hard workouts because it will boost heat up uh, protein production it also boosts not only the white blood cells I talked about, but it boosts T cells. So I refer to the white blood cells as the army, which goes out and attacks viruses it attacks inflammation it helps it helps suppress any like colds and then if it runs into trouble the t cells which i equate it to like the marines the marines will come in and take out any viruses or bacteria that the white blood cells can't clear out so the sauna itself will boost the production of all three the heat shock proteins the white blood cells it will increase T cell production. So I wanted to elevate my body's immune system prior to the final thing that I did that day. I do want to mention if you're going to go into the sauna, make sure you hydrate, you drink some cold water because you want to pump the toxins through your body and you want to increase your sweat production. So after 
after the sauna session, I drank about a half gallon of ice cold water. The purpose of drinking ice cold water was to lower my body's core temperature. Because like I said previously, a sauna can elevate your body's temperature to about 104 degrees. And at five o'clock, I had a blood donation appointment. So I needed to reduce my body's core temperature back to around 98 degrees in order to donate blood. Because when you go in for a blood donation, not only does it help save lives, but you want to hydrate for one thing before you go in for a blood donation, but you also if you're coming out of a sauna, you want to try to decrease your body's core body temperature. So one of the reasons I went in for the five o'clock session of blood donation is because there's a lot of health benefits with donating a pint of blood. The first thing that it does and the main reason why I went in that day was to remove endotoxins. So I've been exposed to mold from a previous house where the water valve on the hot water heater busted and it flooded the basement. So I've had microtoxins that I've been working with a naturopathic doctor and I've been trying to detox. So I donated a pint of blood not only to reduce the one pint of endotoxins but also to it helps lower your blood sugar so it can help lower blood pressure which you can measure on before and after a blood donation session it helps to release endorphins and it helps to reduce stress it absolutely will increase brand new red blood cell production it drastically enhances blood flow just a regular donation of a pint of blood will help increase blood flow throughout the body and reduce blood viscosity. So I'll try to donate blood at least twice a year. You've got to hydrate afterwards. You really need to do like a vitamin with iron in it or you have to eat red meat. But you got to be very cautious when it comes to your iron levels after a blood donation something just to be cautious on now the biohacking session that i did was specifically to reduce endotoxins i don't particularly like recommend doing all three within the same day i did it specifically to boost my body's immune system and it does take at least one to two months to try to recover when it comes to lifting weights at the gym and, and getting your strength back because you need that pint of blood to regenerate when it comes to doing squats and doing bench press because you help reduce the inflammation and toxins but your body has to recover if i was going to start out biohacking the first thing that i would do is start to warm up with the use of a sauna go in for maybe five or ten minutes until you start to increase sweat production once your sweat production production peaks if it ever gets to a point that it starts to decrease sweat production go ahead and get out of the sauna so try to incorporate different biohacks throughout the day or there's different biohacks either to get more sleep there's specific biohacks for uh, increasing your body's vibrational energy there's biohacks when it comes to lucid dreaming there's different things you can do like like I said, you can alter your body's biology, but on a higher level, you can alter your brain frequencies. You can alter your body's core vibrational frequency. I'll alter my brain frequencies between alpha, beta, and at times I'll do brain training up to gamma frequency. Now the special thing about gamma, real quick, gamma will sync both the right and left hemisphere of 
the brain itself. So it has the ability to help with clarity and when it comes to critical thinking. If you want more information about gamma brain training or increasing or altering your brain frequency, uh, let me know. Post it in the uh, comments. There's different devices you can use to alter your brain frequency from like brain tap or there's different apps on your phone that you can download to train in different sessions. I do recommend specific headsets when it comes to listening to audio tracks that will put you into a different state of consciousness when it comes to vibrational frequency. Now, if you have any thoughts, questions, comments, post them down below. Let me know what you think or if there's particular biohacks that you would like to have presented in a future video. I've had requests to do biohacks when it comes to the lymphatic system and the vagus nerve stimulation. So we'll be um, exploring those topics in the future, but I truly hope this helps to talk more about what exactly biohacking is and to give you some examples. So I'll see you next time.